Our awesome message today comes from our mate, Rachel Calland in the United Kingdom from today's Community Church. Good morning to you wherever you are this morning. I am so pleased that we can be together for Scattered Sundays. I've got a message I want to share with you. Um, the team over the past few weeks have been speaking about this is how we fight our battles. Um, our nation and our globe is in a pandemic, a battle at the minute. And you may find yourself even in a personal battle or maybe just struggling with the situation at large at the minute. I don't know where you are this morning, but I do know this right at the start. God is for you. And the amazing thing is that he sees before and after and he knows what this battle looks like. And so I want to continue this morning speaking about this is how we fight our battles and perhaps what we need to be equipped with for fighting our battle well. As I look back in my life and think to some more challenging times that I've had, uh, as I'm sure you will do as you reflect, um, there have been times where I've been in a battle and I felt the heat of the battle, the intensity of the battle. Kind of like when people talk about being in the eye of the storm, you're in the thick of something big. Now that could be a relationship breakdown, it could be a personal crisis you've been through, it may be uh, losing a loved one or anything, a financial loss, whatever it is, you can probably f reflect back to a time where that felt overwhelming, it felt crippling. Even as I've looked back this week, I've thought about that and even just experienced some of the pain that I've had with that before. And there is a certain heat at certain points in the battle. Now, when you kind of come away from that battle and maybe it's finished, it's over and it's had a bit of an end, maybe it's drawing to a close, you can kind of reflect back and remember what it was like, but you don't feel it with that same heat and intensity anymore. So wherever you are today, you may be in the thick of a battle. You may be looking back on some battles or you may feel you're at the start of another battle. Wherever you are, I want to speak to you today about a battle that we are all in all the time. Um, Galatians 5 Paul, the author, speaks about a battle that when you come to faith, you are in right at the beginning. I don't know if you knew that, but there is a battle between yourself, the human part of you, Paul calls the flesh, and the part of you that is new life in Christ. He says that there's a war waging between the flesh, the human part of you, and the spirit of God who you are becoming. And he says that it's a continuous battle or they're continually at war with one another. And so even if you're not in the middle of a difficult time today, you are in a war. If you've come to faith in Christ, you're in the middle of a battle. And what I love about the word of God and God himself even more so is that he never leaves us without direction. Jesus himself is the way. And he's given us some amazing stuff in scripture that we can look to and learn from to look at how we fight this battle that we're all in, the battle between our human self and the person that God is calling us to be, the spirit of God within us. Now, I don't know about you, but during this lockdown period, I have felt the heat of battle, not just from a personal circumstance, but just from the fact that I feel that like my life has been under a microscope in my home, in my household, with my two beautiful kids who are bringing out the monster in me and the ugly in me. And I'm sure you guys can relate to this kind of season. We're seeing some of maybe the more dark things about ourselves. And maybe you feel that there's a tension between who you know God has said you are and who you are becoming and the flesh part of you, the human part of you. And I really want to speak to that today because there's another part of scripture which I'll read to you in a minute, Ephesians chapter 6, where Paul again talks about putting on the armour of God. And today I want to speak to you about how we fight our battles wearing the right clothes. I don't know what you're wearing now. I don't know what you've been wearing over lockdown. One thing I have worn faithfully over lockdown are a really horrible pair of white sliders. Now, these sliders should have never seen the light of day. I bought them for a pool holiday about five or six years ago. Guys, I've been wearing them everywhere. They've been to Tesco with me. They've been in the car with me. I've not really been anywhere else, but I've been wearing them around the house. The only place I've not worn them 
is when I've been on a walk or a run because it is completely inappropriate. But these things I have not taken off. And so I don't know what you've been wearing, but you've probably been wearing stuff that's suited where you've needed to go. If you're a key worker, you might have been wearing a uniform. If you're at home, you might have had sweatpants on. I don't know, maybe you've been wearing jeans. I forgot I owned a pair of jeans until I got dressed today and put makeup on for the first time in a long time. So whatever you've been wearing, it's probably been fitting for the season you've been in and where you have been to. And just like how that plays out now in our normal life, the battles we have, God has laid out some armor and given us by a grace gift, some armor that we can hold and we can activate that put us in the battle for our soul and the battle for the person we are becoming, Christ, Holy Spirit within us when you've come to faith that is raging against your flesh and the human part of you. And so we're going to read now from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 to 18. Paul says this, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Ephesians 6 shows us that we may not be able to choose our battles. We often find ourselves in a battle as long as the one that I've just spoken about. You may have another battle that you are in the thick of and in the eye of, but you can choose how you navigate them and what you wear to battle. And so my first question this morning is, what are you choosing to wear in this battle? I want to go through the seven things that Paul has laid out in scripture, the seven pieces of armory or piece of clothing that we have at our disposal as a grace gift that we can activate during this season and far beyond this season. This is the kind of stuff that we want to be putting on every day, just like my white sliders. Maybe you will even see them when we meet together again. Who knows? This is something that we can put on every day and stand firm and still be standing through every single battle. And so the first thing is this that Paul speaks about in Ephesians 6, the belt of truth. You know, it matters during a time of battle and during any time who you believe the truth is and what you believe the truth is because in any battle there is an enemy and we have an enemy scripture teaching teaches us there is an enemy of our soul but in a battle especially lies come deception comes and at that time we need to know not just what we say is the truth like it's a rhetoric or some theory but who we say is the truth you know, I believe Jesus is the truth. He said himself, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so my first kind of question and reflection point I want to put to you today is, who are you putting your trust in? During this time, during lockdown, who are you putting your trust in? Are you relying on your employer to keep your job? Are you trusting in things to just turn around, uh, to be as they were before? Are you trusting in Jesus because he is the truth what you believe as truth matters and when you go into battle scripture teaches you can have a belt of truth it's part of your armory part of your protection for going into that battle the second thing Paul talks about is righteousness and he talks about it is body armor or a breastplate of righteousness you know the incredible thing is that if you know Jesus and you've come to faith in him we know that we become the righteousness of Christ. God tells us we are the righteousness of Christ, not because of anything we've done, but because when he looks at us, he sees Jesus. He sees perfection in Jesus who did nothing wrong, even though he's fully God, fully man. God sees righteousness. But you know, in the middle of that, there is such a thing as right living. What's part of uh, how we fight our battles? It's right living. 
It's making right choices. It's making good choices, not just emotional decisions or feeling decisions, but it's making the right decisions that are in line with who God is calling us to be and what he says is the truth that becomes part of our protection and our body armor in a battle. Not just when we're in the heat and the intensity of a battle, but every day, when we're having a good day, when things have shifted and life maybe takes a gear upwards, it's that day again we put on righteousness. And so what decisions are you making in this season now that are good, healthy and right decisions that are gonna help you to fight this battle because it is a persistent battle? The third thing Paul talks about is peace. He talks about shoes of peace. You know, um, another version uh, that I've not read today, it says that it's the peace that comes from the good news. You know, when we know Jesus, we know peace. Peace is not an absence of chaos. Peace is not everything going well. Peace um, in, in scripture is something that God gives us as a gift. Um, Philippians 4 says that not to be anxious for anything, but to pray about everything. Not just in a good time or a bad time, but in every time, lift everything as a prayer to God. And then it says the peace that surpasses all understanding will be with you. It will reign in your heart and mind. So how do you go to battle with peace? They sound like two diametrically opposed things. What do you do? You lift your voice in prayer. You lift your anxious thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your pain as a war cry, as a battle cry in prayer. We can protect ourselves with the shoes of peace. The fourth thing is this, faith. Paul talks about a shield of faith. If you think about a shield in battle, um, the thing I always envision when I think about a shield, there's a film that came out years ago now called 300, amazing film. And they had these massive, huge shields that they would hold up and bend down before the shield so that the shield completely protected their body and not just their body, but all the people behind them. Do you know, that's like faith. Faith is a shield. It's not an offensive weapon. It's a defense it's something that protects us in battle. As, as we lift our faith, and even faith as small as a mustard seed, as we activate our faith, it protects us and it defends us in the battle. Whether you are in a crisis point now, or whether you are just in the daily grind, the battle of life, lifting your faith will protect you. So how will you activate your faith again today? There are three more things here that Pete, uh, Paul Spot speaks about. The next one is this, salvation, a helmet of salvation. Now, I don't know uh, who you are who's listening to this today. You may have come to faith in Jesus already. And so you have entered his salvation. You know, the, the amazing thing is that in our world at the minute is that part of the belief, the secular belief, is really that we do not need a saviour that we can save ourselves, that we can help ourselves, that science or some other part of our biology can lift us out of where we are. You know, the truth is that I believe is that we need saving. Jesus is our savior. He is my savior. I accepted him as my savior because I could not save myself. There have been times during this lockdown period where I have known how much I have needed a savior even at, at a trivial level, but at a serious level with my mind and my thoughts, I've had to realize and surrender again, not just by standing out and striving and trying to work harder, do better, do more, but by surrendering in battle and saying, God, I need you as my savior. You know, the incredible thing about the battles we find ourselves in is this, the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. And when you surrender to him, he has won the battle on our behalf. So we all need a savior. The last two things quickly, so importantly, are these. Paul talks about the word of God and he describes it as a sword. He calls it the sword of the spirit as the word of God. You know, sometimes, and some of us are going into battle at the minute as people of faith without a sword. You have been given a sword the Bible, the word of God is living, breathing and active. You know, when the word of God 
is within us. Um, scripture talks about allowing the word of God to dwell richly within us. When it's within us and it's not just something we read as a spiritual discipline or as an even just an act of obedience, when the word dwells richly within us, it creates something. It causes change. It holds up a mirror to us. It shows us the good, the bad, the ugly, but something happens when we have a sword in our hand. It's an offensive weapon. And I don't know about you, but when I fight my battles on one, when we fight our battles, we need that weapon in our hand to effectively slay the enemy and end the battle. Last but not least is prayer. You know, in, sim in a similar way to the word of God, this is something we can activate. Our communication with God, our conversation with God and our hearing him and just allowing him into every part of our lives. During a battle, it's so easy to go silent. It's so easy to withdraw. I find it easy to go quiet, to withdraw, to think, to retreat, all of the things that mean going back into myself. You know, during this time and during the, the battle of daily life or the battle you find yourself in, God wants to hear your voice. And he wants to speak to you and commune with you and be with you in prayer. So what is your prayer today? Um, I've, you know, finished this message for today and I've said before, I don't know where you stand this morning. I don't know if you're a person of faith or whether you aren't and you're listening to this broadcast maybe for the first time. Uh, we just want to say how great it is that you are with us, whoever you are. But there is a persistent question and there is a God who loves you and wants to know you. And we just want to give you a chance to respond to him this morning. And so whatever battle you're in, you know, and whatever armor you choose to put on, let me encourage you. God has won a battle and he wants to fight on your behalf. But first of all, he wants to know you. And so if that's you this morning and you want to respond, I'm going to pray a prayer. And you can pray along with me. It's going to be on your screen. And as you do that, just trust and believe and even a tiny bit of faith that God hears you, that he will respond to you and he will meet you where you are. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm sorry. I'm yours now. I'm free now. Amen.